Jackie D. I move that the question be now put. No, no, I'm going to call the Honourable Philip Goff. Thank, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. You know, it's interesting that in a bill that has such fundamental implications for the privacy of New Zealanders and the right of private companies to be protected from intrusive powers by the state, that the national government members, even those on the select committee, only take a call, which is that the motion be now put, because they do not want this legislation with all its inadequacies exposed to the public of New Zealand. Mr Speaker, Mr Chairman, I want to talk to Clause 2, Commencement of the Telecommunications Interception and Capability Security Bill. This bill is not ready to come into force. It's not ready to be implemented. It's been rushed. It's been subject to inadequate consultation. It is technically error-ridden technically error-ridden to the extent, Mr Chairman, that as late as the second reading of this bill, the Minister brings in an SOP that's on the table of this House to say that a major clause should be struck from the bill. That major clause, clause 39, which uh, is about the, the government being able to stop telecoms companies being able to work in New Zealand if they don't have interception capability, was defended to the death by Jackie Dean and the other members of the Select Committee. They supported that clause all the way through, only to have the rug pulled out from under their feet by the Minister, who finally recognised that yet another aspect, a central aspect of her bill, was technically and principally inappropriate and unworkable. And that is an example, Mr Chairman, why this bill should not come into force. Mr Chairman, I support the SOP moved by my colleague Claire Curran that makes the point that royal assent should only be given to a bill that has been subject to a full and independent public inquiry. That point and the need for a full and independent public inquiry was recognised in the Australian legislation dealing with their security services. It was recognised by a member of the Prime Minister's staff who came to talk to me about this bill. The Australians did it the right way. They did an independent inquiry. They found out what powers were justified. They found out what safeguards were needed to prevent the abuse of those powers. And then they passed the legislation. This government hasn't had the conviction or the intestitudinal fortitude to actually do that. This bill is a companion piece to the Government Communications and Security Bureau Act. It facilitates technically its implementation. But the first thing you would ask about legislation that give enormous, enormously intrusive powers to a government is whether there is a justification for those powers. Now, Jackie Dean, in a rare call, said, why is the Labor Party opposing this when they passed the original Act in 2003? For this reason, Mr Chairman, because in that original Act, the GCSB was not allowed to spy on New Zealanders. Not allowed to spy on New Zealanders. It intercepted foreign intelligence dealing with foreign persons. Now we have a bill that gives enormously intrusive powers and it has not been justified. It hasn't been justified to this extent, Mr Chairman, that when we on the Select Committee and members of the Intelligence and Security Committee asked for the police, the, special, the, the Security Intelligence Service and the Government Communications and Security Bureau to come before the committee to justify why there should be these powers. We did that with an open mind. The government refused to allow those agencies to give evidence to the Select Committee, refused to allow them to give it in public or in private or even in secret. We have an outrage that we have a bill that gives enormously intrusive powers that will be utilised in secret and without accountability and no justification was given or even attempted to the Select Committee why those powers should exist. Now the second concern we have is this, Mr Chairman, that if you're going to give those sort of powers to an agency, you want to be sure that there are adequate safeguards in place to stop those agencies abusing the powers. Why is this in the GCSB bill before this parliament? Because of the very fact that the GCSB 
did abuse its powers in relation to Kim.com and by the Kitteridge report was found to have done that potentially on 88 different occasions. So we have new legislation when you've had abuse of powers that does not, Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman, Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Member Shane Ardern. Mr Chairman, I move that the question be now put.